So when you say all Christians, that's pretty vague. All Christians. All who believe and follow so who, Jesus who, who Christ. Christ. Huh? All who believe in and follow Jesus Christ. All that believe and follow Jesus Christ? Yeah. Uh, what does it mean to believe? To obey. To obey and, and keep his commandments. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now we already proved earlier that the laws were given to Israel, right? Uh-huh. The commandments, right? Right. So that's who he's talking about. Yeah. But what? Yeah, Israel. Right. Not 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 everybody you talk well, about. Well, well, Romans 1 actually holds all people accountable. No, it doesn't. You read verse 19, 18, read we verse 18. We're going to get to 19. We 18, gonna to, 18. We're going to get verse there. Verse 18. But at the end of the day, you have to go by context. Yeah. You can't be out here cherry picking. Read all of uh, uh, Romans 1. We're not going to read the whole chapter. Well, we the, the, the whole chapter in Romans 1 and 2 is clear. That Paul is addressing okay, both. I got, a, I got a couple questions for you. Yeah. When it when it talks about, you know where Rome is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Rome is is in Italy, right? Right. Yeah. So my question to you is, were there Israelites in Rome? Maybe, yeah, there were Jews in Rome. Yeah. So that's who Paul is talking to. That's who Paul is talking to. Uh huh. The people of the captivity. Well, again, when you read Romans one in in the whole book of Romans, he's writing to both Jews and Gentiles. So and when it comes to Jews and Gentiles, uh. Let's go. Let's 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 get that. Out and, of and he makes that clear in Romans nine. In let's Romans nine, of, let's get that out of your head real quick, because, yeah, because, what 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 what's getting you? What what does Gentile mean? Can I get uh, Zondervan real quick? Somebody. Yeah. Yes, so the, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maccabees, where it says that we were, hey, we were not. They got they got Maccabees in their Bible. Keep God's laws. Yeah. So watch this. This yeah. is why. Yeah. This, this is who. Because this happened before Paul. Right. Maccabees. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Maccabees revolt, yeah. Before Paul. Right. So once Paul came on the scene, he had to come back and bring those people back to God's laws. The people that he's bringing back to God's laws are Israelites that were Hellenized. So when he says Gentiles, that's who he's talking about. He's not talking about the other nations. Right. Watch this. And this is where that stems from. Uh huh. Read. Uh huh. Book of Second Maccabees, chapter six, verse eight. Huh? Moreover, they there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. There went out a decree, a decree yeah. to the neighbor cities of the heathen, right. the other nations. That's another word right. for other nations. Read by the suggestion of Ptolemy uh -huh. uh, to be saints. Now let's read what who were called the saints. Bring it out. Keep your finger there, because all throughout Paul's letters he writes to the saints, to the saints. Now we're going to show you. In the Bible, all right, precept must be above precept. So belongs to the covenant. And what he goes on to say in verse 25 is that there are people that are not Israel who he will call his people, and there are some people who are part of his people who are not his people. And then in the next chapter, he goes on to explain. Going on to something else. Well, no, 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 saying? no. It's I'm, I'm explaining. Okay. I'm explaining. He is saying that not all who are descendants of Israel are really of Israel. And then in verse 25, he says, there are some who are not descendants of Israel who I'll call my people, and some who are descendants okay, okay. of Israel who are not Let's my see people. see if that's what that means. Well, yes, because well, in the well, next, on, let me just say it, last thing. 10 and verse 1. And then we're we, we going to shut it down because we do have to go. But hey, you, uh, you can always call me. Yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Watch, watch, watch this. This is chapter 10 and verse 1. Let's see if chapter 10, who it's talking to. Read. Romans chapter 10 verse 1. Bring it out. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. For who? For Israel. Romans 10 verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire Brethren, and prayer to God. That they may be God, saved. Paul said, right my desire That's added. and That's prayer not original. to God. Go ahead. King James. For That's Israel. not a good God translation. Israel. That's, right. that's his desire. The, uh, that's who Paul was going after. He was going after the scattered Israelites. Read. Wait. The, uh, this, my desire that's added. and that's prayer not original. to God. Go ahead. King James. For that's Israel. not a good God translation. Is my desire that's added. And that's not original. To God. Go ahead. King James. For that's Israel. not a good God translation. Is my desire that's added. And that's not original. To God. Go ahead. King James. For that's Israel. not a good Praise translation. Praise and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of great millstone honors as well to you brethren you fellow believers all of you who truly believe in this truth in ministry and shalom to the elect i want to kind of touch on this video with the iuic i'm not going to say anything um 
actually against the IUIC in this video that they were teaching correctly. But I will say with this um, Christian, I think his name is Alex. I think he calls himself the vision of truth or something like that. I don't know. I lost I lost place of where he was. But I believe he was called, yeah, confronting black Hebrew Israelites. Vision, voice of reason is what he called himself. Now, he did say in this same video, uh, he did say that he doesn't believe the King James Version is authentic. It's a false translation. So when they came and did a lot of the rewriting and came with the other translations, because they took certain words out, spunt words, and even your scholars who made scholarly content off of it and switched it and twisted it. Now it's not authentic. But we can go to the old Bible and it'll say the same thing. Bibles before that, the uh, 1599 Geneva Bible, um, the Great Bible, the Tinsdale Bible, God's Word translation, all pretty much say the same thing. Even the NIV to some degree. But this is what they do. They will use a Bible according to their will to fit their doctrine. But let's see. Let's go to Romans. And I'm not going to make a long video out of it. You know, we can go deeper into that. But we do this so much. But out of edification, you know, for the edification of the video, we want to go into a little bit. Now, let's go to Romans 1. Now, this is talking about the greetings to the saints in Rome. That That's how you write there. This says, Paul, a servant of Yahweh, says here Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of Yahweh, which he had promised aforetime, afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Yahweh, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Now, we got to understand when you read this, right, and you're talking about the seed and the flesh, and everything else, and they'll say it has nothing to do with genetics, but it's being mentioned. And then he always, when he starts off talking about men and brethren, which was an idiom they used uh, in the Greek, and it, which means just men and brethren, like like handsome man, so to speak, or male and female. So you know, when you see this, why would he want to change? As the brother IUIC said it, one minute he's footed. Uh, for God's people and the next minute is for everybody else well what the hell is the reason for God's people then what would be the reason for him to go out and try to reach the Israelites if it came for all mankind that's the thing I would ask him why does that make any sense right unless it was for the fact that the Israelites was set up to be over the other nations so we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 12. I didn't have this up. It says, Now concerning um, spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant, that ye know ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols as ye were led. Now we got to understand that the Bible had various translations or various things set up as uh, off of the Vulgate, which was many Vulgates, the Gent Gentium, Gentilius, uh, fauna. It was just a placement word for stranger or heathen or Greek. You go into the older Bibles, it don't even say Gentile. It'll say heathen man or Greek. And we know Paul was, I believe, a Roman citizen. So he was considered a, a Roman who was a Jew, who was an Israelite. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense, the things that they say. So let's go back. He said, going down to verse 7. It says, to all that be in Rome, right? Beloved of God, called by to the saints. And the brother of IUIC went into Psalms 147. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Yahweh. So another scripture just came to my mind. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. The more you do this, you know, the easier it just comes to you on certain things and how easy it is to deal with the Christian man, right? <laughs> Let's go to Romans 1, verse 1. 
let's go to um, uh, let me see here uh, I think it um, let's go to Acts let me go to Acts real quick Acts 13 and let's see what it says uh, now it says here this is titled on Cyprus it says here let me see if I can get to it. It's a lot in here. It says, um, then Paul, this is verse 16, 13 to 16. Now this is talking about now when Paul and the company loosed from Paphmos, they came to per Perga and Paphlia, and John departed from them returning to Jerusalem. But when he, uh, when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Prisida, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. So they went into the synagogue, and reading the prophets, you know, the rules of the synagogues. You know, I'm just skimming through it. Then it says, then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand, and said, Men of Israel, here we see that men of Israel again. And ye that fear God, you had your proselytes, God fearers, right? You had some that believed, that's what the ministry was about. You had some who believed on the Messiah, but they didn't believe, I mean, they believed on Yahweh, but they didn't believe on the Messiah. That's what he was preaching, right? Men and uh, men of Israel, uh, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with a high arm brought them out of it. So what the Christians can't see, and I know that the, the brothers of IUIC, they read, um, they read uh, the, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, which they don't agree with. Um, the brothers pulled out the first Maccabees and went into uh, what Antiochus did, and but they don't totally agree with that, saying that he, they got themselves together or whatever. But the Maccabees is not canonized because Martin Luther, the slave owner of six slaves, took it out, and that was part of us not knowing our history. So when the time of us going into slavery, then they took more out. So why would the people take all these books out of the Bible? Unless they didn't want us to know. So now you got these Jesuit knockoffs who are, who are trying to bring it, bring us back into bondage. And this guy here, Alex, he's got a lot of Christians that's in support of that, right? But that's fine because the Lord only wants an elect anyway. This says, verse 26, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you that fear of God, here we go again. This is why he said men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham. The reason why he said that, because they were boasting that they were the uh, children of Abraham, the stock of Abraham's seed. They had a lot of boasting, right? And Paul was always getting on them, being smart about that. That's why he said that. He said men and brethren and the children of the stock of Abraham. So why would he say men and brethren and then the stock of Abraham if they are brethren as well? Because you had other Israelites who wanted to separate themselves in a more hierarchy, right? Just like today. It said, whoever among you that fear of God, to you the word of salvation is sent. Again, we see the God-fearers, the proselytes who converted, right? And this is where Christians will go. But then you go to Acts, the second chapter, and they just don't see it. So, you know, why try to force it down their throat for something they don't see when all through the scriptures... It doesn't make sense for Paul to be saying, men and brethren, the chosen seed and everything. But yet, you know what? All of you, it doesn't matter now. Why would he do that? Wouldn't it just simply be to all who believe? Forget the men and brethren. Forget the stock of Abraham. Forget the Israelites. I want all to come to repentance. So you see the confusion when he says men and brethren and then all you see the universalism that they put in the Bible with the word world, right? When you look at that word world, it really goes into be, being brought back, right? Um, 
there's many definitions, but the word in that text means to be brought back. But it says here, but God raised him from the dead, and it goes on to say, um, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can read the whole 13th uh, chapter. It's called, the Gentiles asked to hear the gospel. It says, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought this through the uh uh, these words might be preached to the on the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes, that's what I was saying before. So why would you have Jews and then religious proselytes? You was different. There was different uh, uh, levels and different sects of Israelites, right? Follow Paul and Barnabas, who was speaking to them, persuaded them to continue the grace of God. So, you know, we can read all this, um, but let's go to, we're going to go to the blue letter, and we're going to go to Acts 9 and 24. This is, but they're laying, uh, let me see here. It says, uh, but their laying await was known as Paul, Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. It says here, uh, let me see if I'm in the right. Yeah. Um, after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. This is what it's saying. The Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await the was, uh, was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the, the disciples took him by night and let him down the wall in a basket. Helping him escape, right? Then it says, and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to, to, to the disciples, but they were afraid, they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But it says, um, but Paul and Barnabas took him and brought him uh, to the apostles and declared them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly in Damascus uh, in the name of Yahweh. So I want to get to the point. Um, I want to get to the point uh, that that brings it all home. Okay. And then it says, here we go. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of Yahweh, it says Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to uh, Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. So we can see here, if you pay attention, here was uh, Paul and disciples being plagued, right, ready to be killed by the Grecians. And so people would think the Grecians, or you might see Greek, like when you look at the scriptures in uh, uh, Galatians 3.26, when they say there's neither Jew nor Greek, you're all one in, in Jesus Christ. But when you go to the, uh, uh, he talking about the Bibles, but when you go to the actual um what Bible is that? The Bible of 1599? Uh, I just said it earlier. But the Bible of 1599, it says actually the word Grecian. It says they're neither Jew nor Grecian. And then you know how the scholars, they'll take it when you go into the blue letter and it'll say non-Jew. And that never was the case. Right? That, that never was the case because we're going to look up this word Grecian. This word Grecian means, let me go on uh, Acts 9.29. Let's see what this word Grecian means. And the name uh, against the Grecians, G1675. It says, a Hellenist, one who imitates the manner and the customs and the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. Used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. See, the, the way to really cut these Christians is go into context, go into the understanding of the words, because you could fight tooth and nail on Jew and Greek, 
Gentile, Greek, Jew, Greek, Gentile. You're, just, you, you, you're running in circles. It's on uh, the Geneva Bible is what I wanted to say. Good, uh, Galatians 3.26 in the Geneva Bible says Grecian. So you just keep going back and forth. So when they pull out the scriptures in Genesis talking about an Abraham seed, all the children of the earth shall be blessed. And you go to Acts 3.25 or you go to Romans, uh, Revelation 9 and 7. And then he, he goes to Romans 9. I mean, it's really easy work. You know, I, you know, this, you know, it's what it is. Now they did go into the brothers, they did go into uh, uh, Abraham's seed and he pulled out Romans 9, 26 in the place that was said that they are not my people. There you should be said unto them, you're the children of the living God. But Hosea, it says, as it's saying Hosea, Hosea 1 and 10 says that the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. And it says the same thing. It was a, in a place that it was said they are not my people, but there they should be called the children of living power. The problem is with these Christians, they're stiff necked right and they will not see it until you go into context and every time they come up to us and we read it and we go into context they have nothing to say or they'll keep fighting for gentile and then we got to erase the word gentile because gentile can mean many things just like the word world john three sixteen, and the scripture says gospel of the world but in 17 it says i pray for them i pray not for the world so anyway so when we go to Romans 9 and 13, 9 and 11, it says, And the children not being born, talking about Jacob and Esau, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand. You know, not of works, but of him that calleth. So we can clearly see that they was already ordained to be that way. So when a Christian, this guy also said, when a Christian says um, that, the, you know, the children of Israel, they sinned against the Lord, and then the Lord opened it to all people. Like the Lord doesn't know what the children of Israel was going to do. as Proverbs 20, 24. The Lord is the one caused us to sin. But that's not all Israel, right? Because you're going to have the elect out of the rest of the Israelites. That's what Paul went for. So you can't just say it was... Uh, you know, they, they didn't, they, they sinned, so the Lord opened it to, to all people. Now you're making it up. You're just putting that in there. And through that universalism, that's exactly what happened. When you're dealing with Gentile and stranger and words that can mean 10 different things, you're dealing with universalism. That's why you go to the Hebrew and to the Greek. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.